Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai in South India. Today I am going to briefly talk about the association between salt and the skin. Salt or sodium chloride as the chemists call it, is an ubiquitous substance on planet earth known to humanity from the dawn of time. Salt derives from the Latin word sal. In the Ebus papyrus of 1600 BC, the Egyptians used salt as an emetic and as an anti-infective for wounds. Hippocrates advocated salt topically for many skin disorders. And in his famous Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Christ addressed the audience and said, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled upon by men. Today, it is one of the most commonly used drips in clinical practice anywhere in the world. The most abundant source of salt, of course, is the ocean. There are some water bodies in the world, like the Dead Sea in Israel and the Great Lake Salt City, La Lake in the uh, in United States, where the salt concentration is about four to eight times that found in the ocean. In countries like India, especially the sunny south, salt is obtained by trapping seawater in shallow pans, which are called salt turns, and then allowing the water to evaporate. The salt thus obtained is called solar salt. It is coarse and it is rather impure and is used mainly for salting, in other words, preserving meat and fish for long voyages. Underground rock salt is found in many parts of the earth. The Chester deposits in the United Kingdom was found accidentally during a search for coal in 1700 and is since then one of the main sources of British salt. Salt is an important part of our daily diet. Hence, there is an old Tamil proverb which says, Upilla Pandattei Kuppayil Alli Pudu, translated into English. It means food without salt is fit to be thrown into the garbage bin. In Roman times, soldiers were paid wages in salt. It was called salarium, from which the word salary has come about. Salty tasting skin is a hallmark of cystic fibrosis, a genetic disease. Here, mutations occur in CFTR gene, which leads to failure in the chloride channel, which in turn causes increased excretion of sodium. Coming to salt in therapeutics. Balneotherapy involves bathing in pools and springs of thermal, mineral-rich water scattered around the world, specially made use of in the Dead Sea. Many psoriatics and atopic dermatitis patients have found remission after bathing in Dead Sea. Iontophoresis. This is a relatively safe method of treating localized idiopathic hyperhidrosis of the palms, soles and axillae. Usually, tap water is used uh, on a metal plate and a low-grade current about 10 milliamps is passed through this. And for about 5 to 10 minutes, the patient keeps the palms or soles on this metal plate. But then, tap water, the composition varies from one locality to another. So, in a Japanese study, normal saline was used and found to be 1 to 7 times more effective than tap water iontophoresis. Before using sclerotherapy for various vascular malformations, surgeons usually infiltrate a little saline into that area to be treated so that the sclerosing substance does not damage dermal tissue. In granuloma annulare, dermatologists inject saline into the raised border of the lesion intradermally, often resulting in the disappearance of the entire lesion. The dermatologists call this a reverse Kubner phenomenon. Recently, a dermatologist from India used an innovative treatment for myogenic vascular tumor. A pinch of salt was applied under occlusion on the lesion and this resulted in complete resolution of the vascular tumor. I still use cold saline compressors 
for using trusted dermatosis before asking the patient to apply the active medication. Decorative tattoos have become very popular in recent times, particularly with the football and the cricket players and other in the sporting community. For various reasons, some of them would like to get rid of the tattoo in later years. This is easier said than done. Removal of tattoo is much more expensive than instilling it in the first place. And this is because of the very expensive equipment involved in the form of various types of lasers. But there is a very simple method, ancient method called salabration, which I had used it in the 1960s as a house surgeon for removing tattoos, at which time lasers were not available. Now it consisted of inunction of wet table salt into the tattoo area and rubbing it nicely till uh, slight bleeding points appeared. At this stage, the epidermis is gone and the salt is impregnated in the dermis in the neighborhood of the tattoo pigment. At this stage, you just put a sterile dressing on the tattoo and send the patient home. Within a week's time, a hemorrhagic crust forms, which contains most of the tattoo pigment. And when this crust separates, tattoo becomes very much lighter than before. And if necessary, the celebration can be repeated after six to eight weeks. Now coming to adverse effects of salt on the skin. And these occurs depending on the concentration and the duration of exposure of salt. And hence, it's more likely to occur in people who work in salt pans, fishermen, etc. The deposition of salt along the creases and the folds of the skin can cause an irritant dermatitis and sometimes it can even cause alteration in the skin microbiome leading to greater chances of skin infection. The high chloride content of salt in brain leads to bleaching of the skin and hair which manifests as dry cracked skin and brownish hair. This can be seen in fishermen. Ulcers may form on the areas. They may be small or large ulcers and these ulcers allow more salt to be absorbed into the system, causing hypertension. There is an alteration in the skin microbiome in persons exposed to salt water in their occupation or during their sports activities involving swimming in seawater. Now, they show decreased growth of the normal commensals. The normal commensals keep the pathogenic ones away. So, here there is a reduction in the normal commensals. And a pathogenic vibrio species appears on the calves of individuals six hours after they have had a swim in the ocean. And it may persist for even 24 hours. And in some cases, it may result in a necrotizing ascending cellulitis, especially in patients who have diabetes and liver disease. And this can even end fatally. Fungal infections of the skin are common in swimmers and in fishermen. Discoloration of nails and acute paronychia may occur in patients chronically exposed to salt water. So you see how salt is an integral part of our daily existence. Its therapeutic uses in day-to-day -day practice should be further explored. As dermatologists, let us be the salt of the earth as advised by the man of Galilee. Thank you.